Well, my name is Jim Whitman, and um, my research here in the Department of Peace Studies is looking at the, the governance, or if you like, the kind of control issues that surround nanotechnology. Now, at first sight, that might seem a surprising thing to be undertaking inside a Department of Peace Studies. But my own feeling is, is that the kinds of issues that surround nanotechnology and that are likely to arise from, from nanotechnology are really quite central to peace studies as I've always understood it and as I've practiced it here in the department over a decade. Well, nanotechnology is um, a fascinating business because it, it involves work, nanoscience involves work with materials at the nanometer level, and a nanometer is a billionth of a meter. It's invisible. And various techniques that have been developed in, in recent years means that we can now work at the molecular level. Now, this is surprising in itself, but what follows from, from this is, is that there, it opens up a range of, of, of technical possibilities of astonishing breadth and, and amazing capacity. I mean, there's the famous Arthur C. Clarke line about any, any advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. This comes fairly close to it, in my view. And what happens is, is that at the nano level, that is at this, at this molecular level, familiar materials, both organic and inorganic, take on really highly unusual properties. Um, so you've got dramatic changes in things like conductivity, viscosity, uh, um, uh, 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 strength and, and all the rest of it. So the possible applications which range from material science to supercomputing to, to really quite startling possibilities in medicine are really quite amazing. And there's been a great deal of, of national and international interest in this. Nanotechnology is not something that's on the horizon. It is already with us. There are some 600 commercially available products which have nanoparticles and um, there are something like 60 countries already uh, have developed nanotechnology programs, most notably the, the EU and the United States. Well, I've become, over the years, I've become fascinated by the way in which those three poles of, of positive peace, equity, stability and sustainability, have become linked by the processes of globalization. As globalizing dynamics intensify, and as they become more pervasive, it becomes more and more difficult to, to maintain a, an absolute distinction between those three. And I think in many ways, nanotechnology, and more especially the prospects being opened up by nanotechnology, are going to make all three come together. And this has meant that over the last few years, I've become very, very interested in the prospects for what we call global governance. That is, not merely what states can do to, to, to maintain, say, or, or, or achieve human security for, for all peoples, but also the ways in which a variety of non-state actors, whether it's corporations or non-governmental organizations or even more informal groupings, shape world order, and shape our, 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 the human prospect in various ways, and indeed in ways that impact on equity, sustainability, and stability. Nanotechnology, it seems to me, to be is, is at the center of this. And indeed, its, its advocates and proponents intended to be. You don't have to look very far in, in official documentation, in, say, national government pronouncements, to see that, that, that the visionaries behind uh, nanotechnology are also uh, anxious to promote something they call technological convergence. That is, the, the melding together of nanotechnology with biotechnology, robotics, information technology, and most interestingly, cognitive science. And what we're being promised, and, and you can read this in various EU and US pronouncements, is a language like a, a second industrial revolution and human transformation, or the age of transformations. And I'm rather alarmed by the idea that we're going to transform our world in ways that we can scarcely foresee. Even the principal advocates of nanotechnology are, are quite willing to concede that if, if their plans are successful, if nanotech fulfills its, its, its potential, it will transform the, 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 our, our, our situations variously in ways that we can't even foresee. 
So there's already a, a research agenda in various parts of the world looking at what's been called the societal implications of nanotechnology. Now, my own interest in this arises because as, as a result of the kind of globalizing pressures that I've already described, I become keenly aware that we, we are capable uh, of, of producing an ungovernable world. Now, logically, probably everyone accepts this, but I think the prospect is becoming more real, it's becoming more vivid. Whether it's it, recently it's been in the form of the prospect of runaway global warming, or say, global financial meltdown. You, you, we're, we, we, we are increasing, I think through globalization, through various other kinds of developments, perhaps a diminution of the international, the standing of the international system or state power, the prospects for an ungovernable world are unhappily increasing. And my concern is, is, is to try to bring a focus on the governance prospects for nanotechnology so that nanotech, either on its own or in combination with those other technologies, does not unleash dynamics into the world which we, we will then struggle to contain. We've got enough on our hands at the moment. Well, I, th I think we have to begin by raising the profile of the kinds of dangers that we're ushering in. It's not difficult to understand why there's such enthusiasm and such backing for it. If nanotechnology and associated disciplines are likely to usher in a new industrial revolution, no nation wants to be left behind. And because nanotechnology has already begun to be militarized, there are realist fears. I mean, it's not difficult to understand why, say, an advocate of nanotechnology in the United States will say, we mustn't hobble nanotechnology because we don't know what the Chinese are doing, a much more secretive society. And we, we were aware of a range of, 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 of military applications of this. So we're right up against both the, the positive prospects of nanotechnology and, and, the, and the kind of self-interest that, that states quite understandably pursue. I mean, and, and, and you know the, the benefits to us as, as citizens or individual, individual nations can be very considerable. So we're, we're right up against it. In many ways, it, it makes it similar to the prospects for, for control of, say, biological and chemical weapons. And the bad news is that we, we are struggling even now to, to keep up to date with advances in, in biotechnology and in chemistry. And indeed, as, as biology and chemistry become nanobiotechnology and nanochemistry, I think, I think all efforts to exercise governance, control, uh, international agreements on the pernicious possibilities are going to become much more difficult. And I, and I, th I, th I think that's, a, that's a, a serious matter that needs to be at the heart of peace studies. Now, with several colleagues here in the department and, and colleagues in, in other universities, we have recently begun a, um, a five-year project funded by the Wellcome Trust, which is looking at what we call dual-use bioethics. And this is an effort to get the scientists involved in, in biotechnology, in nanotechnology, and in related fields much more clued up about the, the, about the, the nasty possibilities that are, that are in store. Um, we, we have a great deal of faith in, in the integrity of our scientists. What's, what's a worry for us is, is that because the sciences tend to be really quite narrowly focused, highly specialized, that a great many scientists have very little idea of the range of uses to which their, their discoveries can actually be put. So part of the work we're doing here in the Department of Peace Studies is conceptual, if you like, that is trying to get some understanding of, of how a scientific advance is going to, to fit into these concepts of equity, sustainability, and, 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 and stability. But it's also practical. It's also a piece work of a, of a highly practical cast, which is trying to reach to scientists and to policymakers and to say, we, 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 really, do, we really do need to control the me momentum. Of, of these developments and to, and to think very, very deeply about the kind of risks and costs they might be entailed.